Welcome back to Final Final, a consume media podcast. I'm Landon. I'm joined by Leo and Josh and Corbin. Hello, my friends. What's up? Hello, amigo. What's up? Hello, some Spanish over there. I speak no Spanish. What language did you guys take in like high school and college if you had to take one? I've I've I'm fluent in one language, but I have learned three languages over the years. From kindergarten to eighth grade, I learned a lot of Hebrew. Mm-hmm. But the only thing I remember is Ani team, which means I need to go to the bathroom because <laughs> I always wanted to get out of class. Of course. Uh, Smart, and then I took French in high school because my hockey playing friends spoke French and I wanted to talk to them. Oh, good point, because they're probably Canadian. Yeah, French oh, Canadian. Yeah, cool. they're from Quebec. And then uh, I took Spanish in college because I figured that was probably an actually useful language to learn, but I don't remember it, except for hola, amiga. I don't know if amiga is a word. But amiga is, is correct to me, because I'm a girl. Yeah, well, then I'm correct. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, totally. I also took Spanish. I took it in high school and college, um, and then I took a trip to Peru right after I finished college, and that helped a lot, especially coming right off of taking a good bit of Spanish and then being immersed in it significantly helps and um it's pretty much gone now what about you guys okay so yeah my uh history with taking foreign languages i did spanish for like seven years like from like elementary throughout high school and like i remember a lot of numbers i remember some phrases um and stuff like that not really a ton. I'm starting to learn like patois, but like I don't really know if that's like a, that's not really an official language, but it's just something that's like spoken amongst Jamaicans and stuff like that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, nice, nice, very cool, oh, very nice. Well, I took four years of Spanish in high school, and then a year and a half of Spanish in college. Um, but I'm afraid to say that it didn't work because when I went to Mexico last year, I tried to use it. And I was not able to get anything that I was trying to get because I wasn't good enough. Sad. Yeah, I'm so this, sorry to hear that, Corbin. It was so unfortunate. There was this one restaurant. Basically, we had a reservation for dinner there at like 7, but you couldn't like park there, I guess. So I was trying to park, like walk down the street, like go look at shops and stuff. And I was trying to tell this man who only spoke Spanish that that's what our plan was to do. I was like trying to tell him. But it was not going down, not working at all. So we had to move our car, and that was really sad. So it turns out we all only speak English. Which is why the captions will be in English. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. 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 Anyways, what's been been going on in the world of consume? I heard uh, Josh went to Los Angeles or something. Yeah, I might have done that. How was it? How did it go? It was great. Good. It was great. I've never been out to LA, so it was a great time going. I was very excited to go. Um, It was something that I, you know, I might have spoken to Michael and Leo about at the beginning of the year. I was like, I kind of want to (laughs) go. So you manifested it. Good job. (laughs) What'd you do out there? Uh, I went to the Laker game on Tuesday night. Oh, dude, that's so cool. I didn't know that. No, it was I got to the convention center where we were like filming and everything Mm -hmm. and then I was just like as I got out of the Uber I looked to my right and this state not Staples anymore but it's like crypto.com whatever is like right next to the convention center and I was just like ah it would be crazy if there is a Laker game I was like ah there is a Laker game and so I checked shout out to the game time app because uh, it gave me like super super cheap tickets so I was just like alright yeah let's just do it sick not sponsored, but sponsor us. And exactly. how was it? Oh, it was great. It was great. I mean, there was everything that you could expect from a basketball game. I mean, like, they it went to overtime and all that oh, stuff. Nice. It was tons of drama. Great. Love. LeBron played great. Finally got to see him play in person. So That's that was so fun. sick. Sweet. But yeah. No, the shoot itself went really well, which was great. The client was happy. Uh, we got to go out to Santa Monica. That Santa was Monica's fun. Santa Monica beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Had a great time. Nice. That's wonderful. What was the shoot? I know what the shoot was, but tell the audience what the shoot was. Yeah, so it was for our wonderful client, Shepard. Shout out to Shepard. Um, and got to film the AHOA conference for them, which is 
the Asian American Hotel Owners Association. So yeah, I memorized Good job. that. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, acronyms. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. We got two days of production out in Los Angeles. They're based here in Atlanta, uh, and we're gonna capture some interviews with some of their executives here in Atlanta. Um, on Thursday, April 20th, which is two days from now, but by the time this podcast comes out, and I don't know what day it'll be. So Thursday, yeah. April 20th, and we'll start the editing. Good times. Good times. Amazing. Yeah. What other projects do we have coming up, Leo? Well, what type of projects do we have coming up? I thought you'd never ask, Corbin. So uh, we got a pretty cool project. We're going to be filming, or not filming, we're going to be producing, uh, animating, and designing graphics for a keynote presentation, uh, a virtual conference for our newest client, Beamery. Beamery works in the talent technology space, uh, working with enterprise companies, and ultimately they're going to have a 30-minute presentation that we're going to be producing, editing, designing graphics for, animating uh, over the next month and a half or so. So big project, really excited about that. Um, Next week, we're filming with our friends at Trulio, and I'm super excited about this video we're producing for Trulio. Uh, they rebranded. Um, their name was DMS. They're now Trulio. We did one day of production with interviews, and then we now have that script, so it's time to design some graphics and capture some very specific B-roll. We're doing that next week. I'm excited about this one. Five-minute video all about the rebrand. I think it's going to come out great. Yeah. A couple projects we have been working on and are finishing up is, well, the Maxio and fully animated explainer video is out and about in the world. It is live. Yeah, it's Super, floating on the internet. It's on the internet. Super proud of that video. It's it's our most abstract animation, which it, that's a huge trend. I, I mean, Apple is is um. And always an innovator in their motion design, and they do a lot of really abstract graphics, which is where we got a lot of inspiration from this video for. And I just think the video is so cool. It it, it walks through what Maxio does and can do for your business, but in a, an abstract way that also really uses their cool geographic, I mean, geographic, geometric brand <laughs> elements. So Love super it. proud of that project. And yeah. another one we're finishing up, another fully animated explainer is for Calendly. So you're probably familiar with Calendly, using it to schedule your meetings, but they recently acquired um, Prelude, which is a company that does recruiting, specifically recruiting coordination. Hmm. Um, and so we made an explainer for that. And that was really cool because they didn't have stylized graphics yet for the prelude functions. And so I got to create those. And I think they may use some of them on their website. Um, and I got to help produce that project too. And I was the head designer. So super proud of that. We're really excited for it to get out into the world. Yeah. Epic. Love it. Love, love the animated work. Love the live action work. We're actually the, the gig in, uh, for Beamery. We're actually contracting a crew out in London who's actually going to be filming it. So. And you know what's so cool is the designer, Anna Lynn, who's working on this project, is often in London. It's pretty what's sweet. She, what's she doing there? Her boyfriend is living there right now for... He also works in film, but... Um, so he's doing something out there. That's he's also... Um, he's from Australia, so he's kind of like... Nomad. Very international, which is... That's cool. Awesome, yeah. Love it. Anyways, if you haven't seen Maxio video, it's up on our LinkedIn, our Instagram, and our website. So go check it out. It's pretty sweet. Sure is. Yeah. Anyways, uh, what's everyone? What's everyone been watching? Well, nothing's new here. Been watching a lot of YouTube, but been watching some new stuff. I'm really into Josh Peck, you know, of Drake and Josh, our, yes. our childhood favorite. I love his podcast and he, he posts it on YouTube as well. So I usually watch it. I recently watched the one where he had Hillary Duff on. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. Love Hillary Duff. Um, so I've been watching his podcast a good bit lately. Very nice. I've got a few things that I've been watching that I'm excited about. We're on season three of Ted Lasso. Great shows. I mean, it's, it's such a feel-good show. I'm um, really excited about that. I finished the entire first season of Shrinking. It took a few episodes to grow on me, but it's really good. Got Jason Segal, Harrison Ford. Uh, Harrison Ford plays the biggest curmudgeon of all time, <laughs> and he does a great job with that. Um, 
There's this new Netflix show. I, I don't know how new it is, but it's called Full Swing. Yeah, it's the it, golf one, right? It's, it's a golf one. It's very much like the uh, Formula One yeah. show. Okay. Um, yeah. But it's really, really cool. They've, I've watched four episodes so far with a bunch of the top golfers in the world. Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas, Brooks Kepka, Ian Poulter. And there's a really good episode about... <clears throat> The guy who's like the 70th best golfer in the world. His name is Joel Damon, and he's got an interesting take. He's like, well, someone's got to be the 70th best golfer in the world. It's got to be me, right? I love yeah. that. Um, and what a then positive outlook. It's all good shows. Um, and then yesterday, of course, of course, the Stanley Cup playoffs started, which is going to consume my life. Let's go Rangers. All right. I'll root for the Rangers. I got nothing wrong with the Rangers. Go. Yeah, go Rangers. All right, I'm a Rangers fan. Is um, <laughs> hockey coming back to Atlanta? I hear uh, hockey's coming back to Atlanta, possibly. I'm not going to believe anything until it actually happens, but there was a big development yesterday. They announced a $1 billion yeah. arena that's going to be built in South Forsyth, yeah. uh, right at the intersection of uh, McGinnis Ferry and... Uh, Something else up north, you know, wow. just just north yeah. of the, yeah, uh, the Avalon and Alpharetta. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, that, they announced that yesterday. Uh, Eighteen and a half thousand uh, uh, person arena going to mm. go up there, and the idea is that maybe they'll put a hockey team there. We'll yeah. see. Sick. That'd be, sweet. That'd be awesome. Yeah. The whole development apparently is supposed to be bigger than the battery. Oh so, my gosh. You know, wow. The battery is kind of I've read like the standard for multi-use mm -hmm. complexes in mm -hmm. America. Wow. And I so didn't know that. apparently whatever they're the money they're dumping into this new thing is supposed to be even bigger than that. So. It makes sense. Atlanta's growing so rapidly. We've got obviously some sports teams to root for, but what's what's another one hurt, you know? That's yeah, it's good. We have plenty team. of people to root for them. I'm already planning our, uh, our how we're going to get in with their marketing content team. Absolutely, so. and and also we need to have like a consume box. Uh, yeah, that, that would be epic. That would be epic. I don't know which one's step one, which one's step two, but let's make them both happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just give us the box first, then we'll make the video. Or okay. we make the videos, and as part and uh, as part of payment, we get a box. Yeah, huh. that that sounds fair. Ah, barter, the old barter system. Yeah, before money. You know? <laughs> cool, I like it. I know uh, Josh and Lando have a fun TV show to talk about, but before they get into it, I'm going to tell you what I was watching <laughs> because I don't want to get spoiled. It's Succession. We know. But me and Aline just finished the most recent season of Love is Blind on Netflix. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Mm. I need to watch that. How and was it? I, it, was, it was interesting. I'm not going to spoil anything, but I wanted to comment on Netflix's inability to do live events because... They are a streaming platform, yeah. and they tried to go outside of what they do and failed epically. So was what that the mean? problem? I saw them. I saw yes. them talking about the reunion. They were so, trying to do it live. Yeah, they, so they done tried that to do, before though. They've only done one other live event, which was the Chris Rock event. Yeah, but that worked for some reason. Yeah. probably not as many people watched it. I mean, there was like. But, how many people watch this? It crashed the ser it crashed their servers completely. Oh. No one was even able to watch it. I mean, it's it probably live. the number one watch show, in, at least in America, on Netflix right now. Yeah. So they push essentially, it so hard. was it Monday night was supposed to be? Oh no, Sunday night was supposed to be the live reunion of the cast, where you know they get all the people, spill the tea, all that stuff. Yeah. They were going to do it live, but I guess they weren't prepared for it maybe because it got delayed over an hour and a half and then they wound up just filming it and then po uploading I was going to say fact. did they film it yeah they filmed it so it was posted yesterday I okay. guess or after it was done filming but it was really funny on like Twitter and stuff all the other streaming platforms were trolling <laughs> them so hard like there's so many memes about what an epic like catastrophic failure it was for them and they were they were trying to mitigate it on their own social media it was like Love is dot 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 late, and then you know, <laughs> that's funny. Was but you know, all the cast and the hosts and stuff were like posting stuff like "We'll be on soon, we'll be on soon," but it never came on. So, you know, I was like, "We're not going to watch a Netflix show." We wound up watching something on Prime instead because it was like, "We really want to watch this, and you failed." Totally. So we're not going to continue to support you after that. So, and that really made a dent in Netflix. Yeah. Your decision. Uh, yeah, Netflix, no more. <laughs> well, I definitely want to watch that new season. I thoroughly enjoyed season one and two. Yeah. Although, I mean, nothing's going to beat that first season when it was a brand new show. Yeah. Now people getting on there just want to be Instagram famous. followers. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, hey, respect. I mean, I'm if pretty you can sure. Sell, if you can sell flat tummy tea and support yourself, by all means, go for it. 
I mean, I feel like in any instance, just getting onto reality TV, you're really just trying to make a name for That's yourself. That's totally true. But I mean, the first season, no one could have known how big it would blow up. So I mean, it, it was right. a bit more of like, a, oh, OK, yeah, we'll try this. Yeah. Yeah. But let's hear let's hear the the the, the spoilers for succession now. <laughs> I've been preparing my my soul for. All do, right. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Oh, sure. OK. All right. So this was the episode that came out two Sundays ago. Um, this was the episode, the episode everyone's been talking about, and we're going to spoil it um, for Corbin and Leo. Oh, and anyone listening. And so anyone listening. Oh, yeah, skip ahead it. if you yeah. haven't um, seen the alert. episode where Morning. the big thing happens that you've been spoiler hearing alert. about. Spoiler alert. Spoiler <laughs> alert. What happens is their dad dies. Dun, dun, dun. But for real this time? For, like for real Not this yet. time. He has a heart attack he on legit, the plane. Yeah. And what happens is, so it's Connor, the oldest son, it's his wedding, mm. but he is basically making it a, a like hilarious political statement. It's like all Americana themed, which honestly iconic. Um, and so all three of the other siblings are at the wedding, but um, what is his first name? The dad. Oh, Logan? Logan. I, yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Logan um, is not coming to the wedding because he's traveling to like make some deal, um, yeah. being total asshole as per usual. And so they get a call, three siblings, they get a call from Tom. Freaking Tom. Freaking Tom, that on the private plane, Logan is like down and they're giving him compressions because he had a heart attack. So he's like, I don't even, I don't know if he's still alive, but I'm going to hold the phone up to him if you guys want to talk to him. Yeah. And the reason people were so into this episode was because the three siblings, except for Connor, he was still fucking off somewhere. Um, the three siblings really did a fantastic job acting because they're coming to terms with they kind of hate their dad but they still really love their dad and want his approval at the end of the day and now without having come together and resolved their issues he's maybe dying and so they, they do a really good job acting trying to talk to their dad on the yeah. phone while he's getting chest compressions not sure if he's alive or dead or being able to hear them um, it was just great acting yeah i mean <clears throat> and that the other part of it is like I had one of my other friends who also like had the episode spoiled for them mm. and honestly like I was telling them like I don't really think that like this particular episode knowing that like this is what happens in terms of like Logan dying I really don't think that it like messes anything up because, it's like, still a great episode they did such a good job of like isolating that episode from like the episode the episodes like before mm -hmm. um in terms of just like leading up to it it mm -hmm. you you don't see it coming so That's like crazy. you'll get into the to the season and like if there's enough time between like this conversation mm -hmm. to when you watch the episode it's still going to catch you off guard and like they did a really good job of that so Sweet. and yeah. it just creates such a, a deeper level of complexity of each of these characters yeah but it is 100 percent hilarious to see my two least favorite characters in this show <laughs> trying to like still like be a part of the family and everything. Who are your like, least two favorite characters? Oh, uh, easily Tom and Greg. Oh, those are my favorite characters. <laughs> Greg easily. especially, dude. Greg is so funny. Team Disgusting Brothers. No, because like they are literally disgusting people. I know, it's so funny. And, like, it's just like I I like You Greg. love Shiv. I know, but like the thing is, so like I like Greg at first. I like Tom at first. But then, like, as the show goes on, and, like, the reason why, like, I'm cool with Shiv is just because, like, I don't really like anybody in the show. No one is likable. No yeah. one is likable. However, like, I appreciate the fact that, like, Shiv doesn't try to act like she's a nice person. What, That's true. What bothers me so much about Tom and Greg is the fact that they act like they're the sweetest people on earth. Right. And Tom, more than anybody in the show, will double cross, backstab, mm -hmm. and do some shady shit to get one over just for himself. He doesn't care. Oh, good so, for like, Tom. It was a long time coming of Shiv beating him down. I mean, yeah, but like at the same time, I'm just like, bro, just like embrace it. That's Don't fair. just be like, ooh, I'm this nice cuddly guy. And like, nah, that this is. I like just your Tom <laughs> impression. <laughs> <laughs> See, You're this, not wrong. this is why I couldn't get into this show. Like, I, I watched the first season, watched the first couple episodes of the second season. I still hated everybody. I'm like, yeah, that, yeah. That, the that, point, those I aren't think. the shows that I want to that's watch. That's totally like, fair. That's you want to fall in love oh, with I, the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how I have been, you know, with shows. It's like, 
you gotta love the characters. Like, I mean, I love Sopranos. You don't love any of those characters either, but yeah. like, I don't know. That yeah, one. they're relatable at least. Yeah, they're in the mob. We're all in the mob, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we're not in the mob. Lando wanted to make sure we said that. No, I said so true. Oh, it is true. Oh, we yeah, are yeah. in the mob. Yeah, oh. so true. Shouldn't are we, we in the mob or are we not in the mob? Anyway. End of the conversation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Consume mob. Yeah, that's how I. That's definitely how I felt the first few episodes. Is I hate these characters. How am I getting into this show? But then I just was able to lean into it and be like, yeah. I'm gonna hate love these characters. Like I, I hate love them. I enjoy hate loving characters. I love Roman. Oh, uh, Roman, he's hilarious. Yeah, I love Roman. Like Roman and Shiv are my two favorite characters. But like I, man, just Tom. I just appreciate every how time. quick and witty the dialogue is. I have to watch with subtitles so that I can. <laughs> Because they, they move quickly with their oh yeah their jabs and jokes. No, Roman is the quickest. So Roman quick, is the so quickest. Funny. And I'm just like, I love his weird ass relationship with Jerry. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's such an interesting dynamic. I, well, that, now that I didn't see coming. I I, I saw that. Coming. I thought Jerry was above that. Nah. 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 And Corbin right. and I look at each other and be like, okay, oh, yeah, but what are we talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. We can move on. That makes on. sense, guys. That makes we sense. We can move yeah. on. Yeah. The, so Josh Jerry, and I have to work through all that. That makes sense. see ya. Yeah. 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 Just, at the end of the day, Tom and Greg, they're the worst. Can't stand the them. Best. Love them. No. Just get them off the show. I'm done you heard them. it here yeah. first. Thank you, Josh. The disgusting brothers are actually <laughs> disgusting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anywho. Yeah, what's next? Do you want a spring draft? I think we should do a spring draft. Mm. So Mm. I don't know if you all saw the episode back, back in the day, probably like half a year ago. We did a fall draft where essentially everyone on the panel got to draft their team of fall-related things. And because spring is starting, it's April, you know. I think we should. I think we should do a spring draft right here, right now. How many should picks we do, do a, we get? Oh, good. good we'll do a nice little snake draft. Two picks each. Okay. Three okay. Picks each. Three okay. picks each. How two. Do we, okay. how, how do we determine who goes first? Um, hey, Michael. Should we rock paper scissors? Michael, give us a number between one and fifteen. Good idea. Do you want me to say it? No, just, just, just think Thanks. of it. You have one. All right, Leo. Three. Seven. Six. All right, oh, Corbin, Corbin you're first. Oh. All right, so spring draft 2023. Uh, spring is probably one of my favorite seasons. Uh, you know, you know the mid seasons, fall and spring are just mm-hmm. so good. Not too hot, not too cold. Um, I think for spring, I'm going to draft shorts. Oh, it's good solid. One. It's a very good one. Oh, we can just go in order. You can go next. Oh, okay, we're going to go in order. Okay. Um, can I draft weather? Absolutely. Oh, then I'm drafting the weather. Solid. <laughs> <laughs> drafting the weather. Shorts and weather. Entire weather. Solid. I like it. Shorts and weather. Cool. Kind of on a similar note, I'm going to draft longer days. Mm. Longer days okay. in that beautiful weather, okay. wearing okay. some freaking shorts. Mm. And now the clock change is never going to happen ever again. So really? Yeah, isn't it? We'll, we'll circle oh, yeah, back yeah, to yeah. that. Yeah, I think so. I think so. All right, so I got two picks. With the fourth pick of the inaugural spring draft, I'm going to go with Back Porch Living. Ooh. Ooh. Solid. Ooh, that's with the a fifth good one. pick of the inaugural draft, I'm going to go with the Stanley Cup playoffs. Okay. Nice. Okay. I know it's pretty cold. You know, it's ice hockey. But imagine watching the Stanley Cup playoffs while your back porch living. Ooh. Good combo. It's a pretty good combo. It's a good combo. And you back, guys have a TV on your back porch, don't you? We do. You? Actually, we, we had a really great idea is that we put our TP on a TV on a tripod so that we can move it inside wow. in the winter when it's cold and put it outside on the deck Genius. in the spring. TV on a tripod. You didn't hear it from me. Actually, you did. Actually, you did, yeah. All right, nice. go, Landa. Okay, my next pick for the spring draft is... Iced beverages. I'm an I'm an iced beverage gal, but when okay. it's winter and fall, I, I j- I'm just a little too cold to drink them consistently. Love an iced coffee. Love an iced tea. Love an iced sparkling water. All of it. I'm going to draft the month of April. Oh. Okay, I'm going to draft the month of April. 
It just has immaculate weather. Um, yeah, it's like the month where it's like the most of just like that beautiful, nice 75 degree weather. And it's a little chilly in the morning and evening. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, you get some funky holidays like uh, April Fool's and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, I'm going to draft the month of April. Solid. Love it. Well, I'm going to be a copycat then because if you're going to draft April, I'm going to draft May. Yeah. I actually prefer May over April. You know, you get Memorial Day. Every, everyone's long favorite holiday. Long weekend. And this year, fun fact, Leah's wedding's on Memorial Day. Oh, very shit. True. So that's even more epic for this spring draft. Very true. So very true. true. Um, I want to get one more round. Back -back picks. Oh. Wait, so we're going three rounds? Three yeah, picks. we get three. Oh, three picks, okay. Mm, I think towards the end of spring, you can go in the water. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to pick all water-related sports. Woo! That's a lot of sports. Okay. Specifically, lake sports. Or nice. Sports. All water-related sports. I'm going to take it all. All right. Love it. Um, being I was just there, I'm gonna take LA beaches. Oh, okay, yeah, solid. LA beaches. All right, my third pick is the general vibe in spring. People's seasonal depression is lifting. People are happy to be out in some sunshine. The vibe is good in spring, as long as you're taking your allergy meds. I was just about to say, I was, like, almost this close to drafting, like, Claritin or something. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> that, what else can you say? <laughs> that's, the, that's the MVP of spring. All right. Bear with me on this one. Ready? Okay. okay. Because there's a lot of bad things about what I'm about to say, but there's also something good about what I'm about to say. You know when you go outside in Atlanta and there's pollen everywhere, you know, and yeah. it's just everything's green and gross. Yeah. But you know, like when you go out to your table and you take a Clorox wipe mm. and you wipe it oh. yeah. and it's gone and it's super satisfying. Oddly satisfying. That feeling of seeing, of, of ungreening it, you know, yeah. making That's it. That's pretty solid. Yeah. The feeling of it going away? Yeah, just like the euphoria. It's just like yeah. it was there. It's and like now, an oddly psh, satisfying. Psh, now it's gone. Huh. Yeah. yeah I never get thought it. of it before. So I yeah. like it. You know what? That's really typical Leo, seeing a silver lining. And I love that about you. <laughs> Thanks, Landa. Yeah. Well, some strong teams out here. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Stanley Cup, back porch living, and psh. What's it cleaning? Vibes. Yeah. The um, longer days. Anyone remember my th other one? Five song it is. I don't know. Well, those two are pretty good. I'll just <laughs> take that. Whatever. Take <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh, it was. Oh, ice uh, beverages. Yes, Cut. ice beverages. Stupid. So yeah, uh, LA beaches, the month of April, and weather. Those are good. Yes. I got shorts, the month of May. And all water related activities. So I think I think you may win actually, but to be vote honest. Vote for your boy. Vote in the comments. Vote for below your boy. Which team you think is the strongest, you know? Corbin is team one, Josh is team two, I'm team three, Leo's team four. Works for me. And if there's something we forgot, let us know because I'm sure there's so many other great things about spring that we forgot. Oh, one is that um, this is kind of more summer, but in spring it starts to happen too. All the good fruit starts to come back in season. Mm, facts. Although Leah's a banana guy, facts. which is in season all year. Don't get me wrong. I like. Wait, can we all say our favorite fruit? I was just kind of baffled, to be honest, that Leah's favorite fruit is a banana. I love bananas, but that's just like such an that's just like such an ordinary fruit, in my opinion. I just. But maybe don't. there's beauty in the ordinary. I mean, I'm not trying to like talk shit on bananas, but bananas are kind of ugh. <laughs> Uh -oh. He's coming. <laughs> I'm not trying to come for Leo. I'm just giving my opinion. You on wouldn't like bananas. <laughs> what like is that tracks. supposed to mean? You're so picky, and you don't like white sauces. And I just kind of feel like yeah, white bananas is somehow strange. in that same. Because bananas on the inside are white. That's why <laughs> you can like mash it up into like a white looking sauce. Kind of. I don't know. Probably why it's related. What's I'm your favorite? A, I'm a berry guy. Ooh, I'm nice. the berries probably raspberries, but you know, if you get a bowl of strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries all in one spot, mm. you know, that just hits different. Okay. Let me tell you two things. One, I bought farmers market strawberries two weeks ago. 
they were insane. They were so good. Second, something I like to do when it's warm outside is I'll buy frozen berries. What? I just shivered and I was just like, it was the most like egregious. I was like, yeah, Yeah, like the full body shave. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I'll buy frozen berries and then I'll put them in a cup with like a little bit of like half and half or almond milk or something oh, yeah. and a little bit of maple syrup and then mm. it kind of just a couple tablespoons of milk and it freezes around the berries and the maple syrup makes it a little sweeter and you just mix it all around and it gets all frozen around the berries it tastes so good and that if you like berries delicious. you'll be really into that that sounds so okay. good mine is probably watermelon with a close second being mango do you put salt on hey. your watermelon no no I mean, I see people do that, or people put tahini on their fruit. Yeah. Um, but I just, I, I really, really like it to just be pure sweet. I got huh. you. Salt is really good, though. I've never heard of I should try yeah. that. I don't think I've ever actually tried it. Yeah, I learned that as a kid. I really like it. My mom but, puts salt and pepper on cantaloupe. Mm. I love cantaloupe, too. But after, when it's warm out and you go for a run or something, just something where you get sweaty, I mean, nothing in this world will hit, like, fresh watermelon. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Like a, ban- a banana after that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but banana with colors around are actually good actually for Actually really you. good for you. I mean, yeah, you I'm also, just, I'm also just fucking with Leo at this point. I eat bananas all the time. I yeah. like bananas. What do you want me to say? I mean, I'd say <laughs> my favorite... My favorite is mangoes. Love mangoes. So However, good. I don't eat them here because the mangoes here are kind of... Oh, I'm sure once you, like, you eat them in Jamaica. Yeah, I've heard. Dude, I'm sure once you had Jamaican mangoes, in Jamaica these are ass. or in Florida. <laughs> like, those are the only two places that I'll... I had them when I was in Brazil a few, a few years ago, oh and, like, s- yeah, it hits so different. Because you get to pick it fresh off the tree. It's different, man. It's different. Like, it's I get just, it. It tastes like ice cream. It's wonderful. But if I'm here stateside, 100% strawberries. Mm. Strawberries, yeah. Solid. Nice. Good choices. Anyhow, people, Q1 has come to an end. We are going into Q2, which means more fun podcasts. But this is the last one. Well, technically, this is the first one of Q2. I guess I'm an idiot. Let's try a different (laughs) outro. (laughs) Cut it. I got you. (laughs) This has been another episode of Final Final, a Consume Media podcast. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. And have a wonderful week, and we'll see you again soon. Yeah. Peace. Peace. Adios, amigas.